Hi Junior Church, it's Sunday and welcome. I hope that you have had a good week this week, uh, whether you've gone back to school or not, whether you're still at home uh, homeschooling with your grown-ups, I hope that it has been a good one, whatever has happened this week for you. Now, just before I started this video, I got a little present and uh, my, uh, my children wrapped this up for me and um, it's a bit out of the blue, you know, but actually recently I have been dropping some hints because uh, I want to play some rugby in the park. So I've been dropping hints about getting a little rugby ball that um, we can play in the park together. So I'm kind of expecting that's what it is. Anyway, I thought we could open it together. So I'll just open it now. It's always very exciting getting a present. Okay, so here it is. The ru There's not a rugby ball. It's a melon. Great. That wasn't what I was expecting. Have you ever had that actually? That you received something you weren't quite expecting, like me today. I've been reading about somebody this week and I'm gonna share that story with you in a minute. In fact, receiving this present reminds me of a story about when I was little. So one Christmas morning, my sisters from Father Christmas got brand new desks and they were amazing. They were big and they had drawers and they had space for all their pens and their paper and it looked absolutely amazing. Now I was the youngest and I got something else for Christmas that year but I can't remember what it was. Anyway, my one of my sisters gave me her old desk. Now this old desk was small. Um, I think it would have been my other sisters before so it was like third hand coming to me and she gave me this on Christmas morning. And I have to tell you, Junior Church, it wasn't my finest hour, but I was really, really cross um, that they got these brand new desks and I got this third hand desk. And um, my mum told me not to be so ungrateful about it. But actually, do you know the thing? Uh, this desk, I had the smallest bedroom, so this desk fit perfectly in my bedroom bedroom and although it wasn't what I was expecting I used it for years and years and years afterwards and did all my colouring and everything at it so it was actually a really really good gift although it wasn't what I was expecting. Now this week I have been looking at the story of Saul and Saul was also called Paul in the New Testament but for this story we're going to call him Saul just to make it simpler. Now Saul ended up living a life that he never expected. In fact before I get started, we should probably backtrack a little bit to see where we are in our story. So let's go back in time to what's been going on. Now, as you may remember, Jesus ascended into heaven, up he goes, and Holy Spirit came down. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus' followers went out and they told people all about how amazing Jesus was and what he'd been doing on earth and all about God. So that's where we are in our story. Now, you might think that this sounds like a really good thing, but not everybody was happy about this. And this is where our character Saul comes into the story because Saul was from a very important family of Pharisees from a place called Tarsus. And what the Christians were doing was really, really making him very cross indeed. In fact, it was making his blood boil. He didn't like what they were saying. He didn't like what they were doing. And he didn't like the fact that they were spreading the word of God and telling all people all about Jesus. And he made it his mission to get rid of these people. He was mean to them. He bullied them. He put them in prison and he even killed them as well. And this was what he wanted to do until one day he was on the road on to a place called Damascus and as he was walking along with his followers there was a bright light from heaven <laughs> brighter than this one uh, it was brighter than the sun and it actually made Saul go blind and he heard a voice can you imagine who the voice might have been here he is uh, so the voice said why are you being so mean to me and Saul said who are you and he said, I am Jesus. Why are you being so mean to me? Go to the city. So Saul was helped by his followers and he went to Damascus and he was there for three days. He couldn't see and he didn't eat and he didn't drink. And I think he was thinking a little bit about what he'd been up to. 
Now, there was another man in Damascus who was a follower of Jesus. And Jesus appeared to him in a vision and said, go and see Saul. Now, you can probably imagine how this man felt because <laughs> he was probably thinking, I don't really want to go and see him because I know what he's been doing. But Jesus gave him pretty much the GPS coordinates of how to find Saul and asked him by the power of the Holy Spirit when he saw him to heal him and to make him see again. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. And from that day forward, Saul became a follower of Christ and he made it his business to tell everybody just how amazing Jesus is. And do you know what? We know all about this because it's in our Bibles. Now in the New Testament of the Bible, which is this section here, this is the Old Testament, the bit at the beginning, we know that Saul or Paul wrote uh, about 14 of the 27 books. That's how passionate he was about what God had done for him. You know, he started living a life, when you look back to who he was in the beginning, Mr. Angry, he started a, living a life that he never ever would have expected. Now you might be thinking, that's a great story, Julie, but how does that apply to me sitting in my house in 2020? Well, I don't know about you, but 2020 hasn't quite been what I was expecting. And over the last few weeks, our expectations of life have completely changed, no matter whether that's home or school or work or just even going to the shops and seeing friends and families. Life has looked really different and it has presented many, many challenges. But I just want to take you back to something that we did right at the beginning of lockdown. Do you remember doing our hope and blessing jars? Now, as you can see over lockdown, our jars have been filling up. So our blessing jars, just to recap, were uh, good things that were happening uh, each day um, that we felt were blessings. And our hope jars were things that we were looking forward to doing once lockdown was over. So I'll put this one down for the moment and let's have a look at the blessings jar. Shall I read some of ours out to you that we've put in? So different members of our family have been putting these in. Uh, so we have breathing cleaner air. That has been a great thing that's happened. Um, people coming outside to sing happy birthday. So on my daughter's birthday, uh, neighbours and friends appeared and sang happy birthday. That was really cool. Uh, another one's just dropped on the floor. Uh, learning to ride bikes. That has been a really good thing that's happened in lockdown as well. You see, despite the challenges and the good days and the bad days that we've had, um, we still have so much to be thankful for. So this is my challenge for you today. If you made a blessings jar, maybe today is a good time when you're sat having your Sunday lunch to take some of those things out and talk as a family about those things that have exceeded your expectations in lockdown, those things that you are really, really thankful for. Now, this isn't saying that lockdown it has been easy. We've had good days, we've had bad days, we've had days that have been very, very messy, but there is so much to be thankful for. And uh, if you didn't make a blessings jar, don't worry about it because I'm sure you could sit around the table and share with your family those things that have exceeded your expectations in the last few weeks. You know, for Saul, when he became a Christian, life still presented many challenges to him. And what I've learned during lockdown, uh, although it wasn't quite what I expected it was going to be, and life won't always be what we expect, but what I know from this situation is walking it with Jesus has just made it so much better because I know that we have an awesome God by our sides who loves us, who's with us in the good times and the bad times and who is right by our side cheering us on. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a bit hungry, so I'm off to make some lunch. Have a great week and I will speak to you soon.